Oh, well, Micah, tell me, is that gorgeous-looking assistant of yours anywhere around? Oh, no, no, the last thing I want to do is interfere with business. Uh, look, do us a favour, will you? Tell her I'll be in at lunchtime and take her for a drink. <laughs> of course I'll bring her back again. Yeah, OK, man. Thanks a lot. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Here we are again. Ah, happy as can be. I wasn't set up. <laughs> you just missed, they missed Mrs. Walker. What a shame. Yeah, she left not five minutes since to go to their Jonies. But she says she'll be seeing us again tomorrow morning. Great. Yeah. Hey, you'll never guess. So? I've just been cleaning upstairs. Gosh! I've just been cleaning upstairs, like I said. And what do you think I found on the floor of Fred G's bedroom? Ooh, I don't think I want to know, Hilda. Go on, Hilda, give us the clue. Did it have more than eight legs? No, Luke, it's a bill. So? What's so special about that? Well, it's a bill for a meal. Meal in a restaurant, by the looks of things. They do serve them. Well, two meals, him and somebody else it'll be. And what do you think it's cost him? Go on, have a guess. Hey, it's only in there, you know. Oh. Go on, Hilda, I'll have a guess. Fish and chips twice with mushy peas, they're quid. Mm. And 20 pence if they'd a pickled onion. Twenty-three pounds and seventy pence. Good gracious. Twenty-three? Yeah. He must have had enough mushy peas to fill a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> Every day would be the first day of spring. Now oh, then, there we are, ladies. Oh, isn't that nice? Yeah, very nice, Fred. Oh, yeah. you might appreciate a wet. Get anywhere interesting last night? Oh, it isn't where you go, it's who you go with that makes a difference to a place, isn't it, Bet? Yeah. Oh, a lot of truth in that. <laughs> who are you with, then? Oh, it's nobody you know. Let's just say it's, uh very good friend. Eats a lot, does she, this good friend? How do you mean? Did you go out for a meal? I mean, is that where you went? Oh, yes, yes, we did. Uh, we did have a bite of oh. supper, yes. <laughs> Every joy would have a new song to sing. La -da -dee -da -dee -dee. 23 quid for a bite of supper? Well, didn't mean a lump of parking and a cup of Ovaltine, you know, Hilda. I know what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll just have to face it. What? I know it's against all the laws of nature. What? But our friend, warts and all, has pulled himself a bird. Of course he has. I mean, why shouldn't he? Fred? Well, he'd be better with her than he is with us, and, I mean, he does dress very well. Dress well? Fred? Betty, love, I've seen wounds better dressed than Fred. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. You know, it's nearly three months since Gibbons has paid their bill. Oh, well, around here complaining if paper's five minutes late. Mm. I'll make a bill out of lad can drop it. Love. Can I have my magazine, oh, please? Yes. It's that new lad, isn't it? Richard, so much rather. Uh, oh. Yes, that's right. It's 45 pence, yeah, please. Sorry about that, no. Oh, thank you. Hey, you're on at the London Palladium tonight. Only if it moved it to Eccles. Oh, Eccles, is mm. it? The only chance I'd have of the London Palladium is if I wrote to Jim will fix it. <laughs> <laughs> that's 80, 90 and a pound. Oh, I don't know how she does it. I'd be frightened to death standing up in front of folks singing. Yeah, me and all, kid. Well, the secret is to get your knees knocking and your teeth chattering in time to music, then nobody can tell. Well, good luck to you. <laughs> Thanks, See love. See you. Bye-bye. Talking of tonight, if I don't get some meat from your husband's tea, you'll probably take a bite out of me. And I want to go into town anyway. Oh, well, actually... I shan't be long. Uh, well, there was something I wanted to ask you. I am coming back. Yes, but I, I have to know about it this morning. What? Well, we just thought with everything that Emily's been through, you mm. know, with, with Arnold coming back and yeah. that, well, we thought that the best thing for her, well, we thought what she needed really... Mavis. Well, can I have my two weeks' holiday brought forward to now? Now? Yes, yeah, so I can go away with Emily, see. Ah, sort of uh, take away the nasty shock of the nasty Arnold coming back. <laughs> yeah. Well, she looks as if she could do with a holiday or summit, I mm. must admit. But you see, I have to know this morning so that we can get fixed up. Well, it's all right by me, love. Well, thank you. But you'll have to OK it with Mr Fairclough before you start packing your bikini, if you know what I mean. But can I say that you haven't got any objections? You can say how you like, love, if you think it'll help you. See you later. Sure. Come in. Only me. Oh, hello. Come in. Sit down. <laughs> Am I early? No, no, not at all. And I don't want to stop you working. Oh, that's all right. I've just got this one to finish. It'll take me a couple of minutes. Uh, do you fancy the Rovers for a drink, if I can read? Oh, it's funny going in there with you. Oh? Why? Well, everybody knows you, don't they? Knows you better than I do. 
I feel I only understand about half of what's going on. Oh, like what, for example? Like Deirdre. Deirdre. There's something between you and her. Something... Look, I told you, we used to go out together. We used to be very close, but... Oh, uh... I know, you said. Yes, well, not now. There's nothing going on now. Oh, I know. She's going out with Mike the Jag. I know that. It's just that... Oh. It worries you. Just makes me feel at a bit of a disadvantage, I suppose. Well, I'm sorry if you feel unwelcome in there. Oh, no, no, everybody's very nice. Deirdre's very nice. It's just me who's not very nice. It's just me that's not very nice. Well... Oh, look, listen, wait. Come on, let's go and have that drink now. And, um... We'll go somewhere else, shall we? Not the Rovers. Not the Rovers. Oh, thanks. Rita, not in. No, she's not here. Oh, Mr. Fairclough. What? Um, can I have a word with you, please, while you're here? Yeah, go on. Uh, well, it's just, um, you know what an awful time Emily's had lately with Arnold coming back and that. Well, we thought that a holiday abroad might be just the thing to, you know, make her feel better. So the only thing is she wants me to go with her. For how long? Well, two weeks. Rita said it's all right as far as she's concerned. Yeah, all right. Oh, you mean... I... Yeah, go on, enjoy yourself. Are you sure Rita said it was okay? Oh, yes, positive. Well, you've got nothing to worry about then, have you? Apart from jellyfish, foreign food, airport strikes, you wouldn't get me going for a fortune. We found somebody any road. Uh, you won't have me to look after him forever, you know. I mean, what is she, a beautician or something, so they say? Someone that saw it. <laughs> I never got in for it once myself. Well, can't improve on anything that's already perfect, can the Albert? Large scotch, please, Beth. And a glass of lager, lump. <laughs> well, there's two light ales there as well, if you like. Beg your pardon, Bill? No, no, Two light hours. Just two. Okay, two light hours as well. Now, if you're round next and he's on double scotch. <laughs> it would only a joke. Hey, do I detect a bit of bribery going on round here? Industrial relations. You use people, you know that, don't you? I hope you don't think I'm using you. Oh, no, I think I know you a bit too well for that. Well, cheers, Mr. Baldwin. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Anytime. And there's a little favour you can do for me in return. Because that was the catch, isn't there? Well, nothing too arduous. Uh, might make a nice change for you. He wants you to run up some curtains for him for his new flat. Out of denim. A bit kinky, in fact. No, not denim. One pound eight. Keep the change, huh? No, actually, it's the material I went out and got for him. Well, he's got you at it and all, then, has he? No, he's got me buying them, you making them. I don't know who he's going to get to put them up for it. Oh, I can put them up. Have you measured your window frames, like I said? Oh, I knew there was something I forgot. Well, we can't do them without measurements, now, can we? Can oh, we? we'll have to wait till tomorrow. I'm not trailing back over there again today. Hey, yeah, well, we could do your measuring, couldn't we, Ida? Not until after his dinner hour. Well, I mean after his dinner hour. Well, why can't just one of you go? Why leave two machines laying idle, eh? Here, you've got the longest arms, you go, Vera. What, me going round to your flat on my own? After you've been seen by me like ailing here. I've got my reputation to think of, you know. Yeah, you're right. So have I. You both better go. Right, well, you can give it to you later then. Come on, let's sit down. Come on. Oh, Mike. Did you love? All right, Fred. How's yourself? Oh, smashing, thanks. Not a bad old world when you come to think about it, is it? What world's this then, Fred? Uh, let's know when you want to serve him, won't you? Don't worry, he's quite safe, but we're keeping him under observation. You know, I think I made a mistake there. Where? Maybe Vera and I to go round to the flat. Oh, why? What harm can they get up to? Ah, just seemed funny the way they jumped at the chance of getting in there. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry I'm late, kid. It's all right. I just didn't know what time it had got. And then I had to wait 20 minutes for a bus, then three came all at once. I don't mind. I tell you what, you have some time off this afternoon. You go and sort your holiday out with Len. Oh, I've seen him. And? Well, he, he came in, so I asked him. Oh. And he said it was all right. Len did, eh? So I phoned Emily and she went and got the brochures. Well, good for you. <laughs> Obviously, I've been handling him all wrong all these years. Well, I told him he didn't have any objections. Did you by any chance mention that I'm out singing for the next few nights? No. 
Did he happen to mention it? No. Oh. Oh, dear. For what? Well, you know who he thinks is going to be doing the papers, sir, uh, the next few days? Me. Only I'm not. Otherwise, I wouldn't be in bed long enough to get my toes warm, would I? So you know who is going to be doing the papers at 6 a.m. on a cold and frosty morning? Mr. Fairclough. Mr. Fairclough. So if I were you, kid, I'd keep my head well down, because when he realises what he's let himself in for, it's going to be like putting a match to a keg of gunpowder. <sighs> Look out for this KP Quick Lunch cashback offer. These special packs tell you everything. And they're in the shops now. I'm very pleased with my new KTEL album. It's a collection of my most popular songs. will be this last farewell. You fill up my senses like a night in the And many of your favorites too. Imagine all the people. It's all here on the Roger Whittaker album. I hope it gives you a lot of pleasure. Which one's your favourite? Garibaldi. Gary, Gary, Gary. Peak friends have got lots of favourites. Which one's yours? If there's one thing better than a trout or a chub, it's the bottle of Guinness Supporters Club. It's the bottle of Guinness Supporters Club. I'd like to demonstrate the advantages of new alkaline foil in wrapping difficult birds. Their foil as you know it. Thank you, Emu. And now today's 25% stronger foil, Alcan Diamond. Years of research have made it significantly stronger, but no more expensive. So, there you are, ladies. Proof positive that a new Alcan Diamond copes with difficult birds and brings out their full flavor in the oven. <laughs> The lady loves milk tray. Your children wouldn't have half the fun they do without their dog. So shouldn't you show him how much he means to you? Give him a meal he'll really enjoy. Pal with Marabone. After all, you know how your dog loves the taste of Marabone. Well, there's real Marabone in Pal. Plus all the firm, meaty nourishment he needs. Pal with Marabone. Doesn't your dog deserve pal every day? He said that our best bet was to choose where we wanted to go and then see what vacancies there are for that particular country. Well, I think what you suggested... Malta? Yes, I mean, it, it sounds as if it might be a bit like Mallorca, but not quite so foreign. Oh, Mavis. Oh, no, I I mean, the food. <laughs> so if I book to go as soon as possible... Oh, yes. I mean, there are no problems, you're sure, about you getting the time off? Oh, no, oh, not Len's to... Len's very good, isn't he? Oh, yes. Well, I'd better get off to the travel agent and see what the chances are, then. So, no. Here. Mrs. Emily Swain wishes to revert to and be known by her former name of Mrs. Emily Bishop. They are, what's that? Yes, have a look at Let's see. You know, it's dead sad, that. It's like, just like cancelling out six months of your life, isn't it? Well, that's exactly what she is doing. Yeah, she's dead right, I know. I mean, who'd want to be stuck with a name that reminds you of nothing but trouble? Well, yeah, well, you'd know all about that, wouldn't you? I mean, the number of times you've had your name changed. Yes. It'd be nice, though, if you could change it whenever you wanted, just by announcing it in paper like that. What would you change yours to? May West? <laughs> no, <laughs> something with a bit more class. <coughs> Bet Rothschild, something like that. Bet Rothschild? It'd be no good without the money, you know. To get me better service in shops. 
A large white loaf for Miss Rothstein. Oh, it has come butter. <laughs> love. Oh, it's coming, Phil. Oh, okay. That pump all right now, Betty. Oh, yeah, champion. Oh, Sorry. Oh, you're there. Huh? I've just said you were out. Well, well, that's somebody on the phone for me? Yeah, a lady. Oh, well, they, well, what was her name? Did she say? Oh, she did, but it's gone right out of my head. Well, uh... Uh, Joyce? Joyce? No, not Joyce. Well, were it, were it Eunice? Eunice. Oh, well, did she not say what she wanted? No, Fred, she didn't say much about out. Oh. Eunice! Oh! <laughs> there was nobody on that phone, was there, Lynch? It was just one of your clever little tricks. Only fairly clever. Yeah, well, it's a grand old name is Eunice, Brad. Ah, well, now you know, and that's all you're going to get to know. Hey, aren't you a bit called Eunice, you know? Well, it wasn't this one, Yates, that is for sure. No, oh, she lives round here. Uh, Eunice Jones, her name was. Oh, this one's name is Eunice Nuttall, and a slag like you won't get within ten miles of her. Hey, I bet you know her second name now. <laughs> <laughs> Of course, he'll never got it all sorted out yet, will he? No. Hey, but it's just like him, isn't it? Little but dead flashy. Do you reckon bedrooms are all there? Hey, I wonder what kind of pyjamas he wears. He <laughs> might not wear any at all. <laughs> oh. oh, hey. There's some letters here. How are we getting on with this job then, or what? In a minute. Hey. It's a love letter. Is it? Ain't not this. Hey, you're not going to believe this, you won't, honest. Ah, what's it say? It's from a debt collecting agency. Never. It is. It says it here at top. Hey, and they're on to him for £1,300. Well, I'll go to our house. Hey, and it says if you don't pay up, they're going to take legal steps. Oh. That will be bailiff's come to take his furniture and stuff away. It might be Baldwin. Oh. Oh, come here. Hello? Oh, hello. Oh, is it? When? Oh, thanks, Chuck. I'll see you. Baldwin's on his way round. Oh, God. That were Ivy. He's just left the factory. You know what it is, don't you? He don't trust us. He don't trust us ten minutes in his precious little flat without it comes charging round here to see what we're up to. Have you got that tape measure? Let's get on with these windows. Yeah. Can't get over him owing all that brass, you know. I feel guilty, me, if I'm a week behind with my milk money. What, you get used to, I suppose? Ah, uh, but do you think they'll duff him up if he don't pay? But you don't mind if I use the hall? No, it'll be my guess. There's nobody else in, anyway. Give myself a workout while it's quiet. Yeah, it's a regular thing, all this keep fit business. It means you're very cheap to take out. Thank you. <laughs> and very nice to take out in other ways, too. Thank you for that, too. I mean it. I know you do. Oh, and I'm sorry if I was a bit, uh... What? Edgy this morning. Oh, about Deirdre, you mean? Yeah, silly. Look, I've told you, we're just good friends. Can be true sometimes, you know. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, and I, I don't mind going to the Rovers, either. You mean we can skip the five-mile drive next time, then? <laughs> yes. Yeah, well, I'm very pleased to hear it. Oh, there is one more thing. If I'm going to be spending my lunch time in pubs, I think I'd better put some work in on my figure. Well, I'll drink to that. Yeah, I've got that. Yeah, there. That's it. Oh, well, we are, right, then. Oh, Mr. Baldwin. <laughs> We're just not going to finish it, aren't we? Oh, yeah. good. Hey, but we're nice of you to come and give us a lift back, though. Had a good look round, have you? Hey, case the joint. Listen, we're not like that. We've measured your windows, that's all. I'll bet. Hey, it's a nice flat, though, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it'll do. You, uh, read this, did you? What? Well, this letter. Oh, I never saw it there, did we, either? No. Well, you should have done. Because it would be a warning of things that are to come. I mean, I can't go on pretending that things are all right forever, can I? Eh? Not when the big boys are after me, when I'm living in fear of the next knock at the door. But it's my fault. Should have left it hanging around, shouldn't I? You uh, did read it, did you? Well, we couldn't help it, could we? You know what you should have done as well? What? What? Read the envelope. Mr. T.R. Shuttleworth. Shuttleworth. That's right. The geezer that had the flat before me. Savvy? Say so one for you, then. <laughs> I opened it by mistake. Mm, here's us thinking all sorts of things. Now, come on, what would you have done if it had been for me, eh? Organised a whip round to help me out or uh, had a party to celebrate. 
I don't know. At me would have organised a party and invited you to it. <laughs> <laughs> All the news is fit to be printed. And a bit more besides. I don't know why I bother, you know. I'm the only one in our house that reads the paper. I mean, Stan just gets it for the GGs. Hilda reads the horoscopes. They think the rest of the papers were wrapping their bits up in. Uh, oh, well, the news. I booked and we go tomorrow. Oh! <laughs> Hello, Rita. Hello, Eddie. It's uh, Malta, like we said. Oh, tomorrow, though. Well, everything else was booked and this one seemed just right, so I said yes. It'll be all right, won't it? Oh, well, yes, I've only got to pack. <laughs> You two swallowing off two warmer clothes, then? Well, we hope it'll be warmer anyway. There. It's all right, there's so many. Uh, this hotel. Oh. It's all about you, Rita, but I, uh, I fancy Jamaica this year, you know. Oh, I don't know. I believe East Africa's wonderful. Do you know, it's funny you should say that, but that's the Oggie's favourite, East mm. Africa. I still think I prefer Jamaica, though. Mm. It lends up as a day trip to Eccles, but I'll be thinking about Jamaica. Sure. <laughs> it looks lovely. Well, I'm glad you like it. I was going to come and consult you, but he said it might be gone by the time I got back. <laughs> Malta will never know what's hit it. Now, are you sure it's not out of your way? I've almost passed it. Well, they said they'd have it serviced for five, but, uh, well, I just hope they don't find anything else wrong with it. Oh, I know the feeling. <laughs> All right? Yeah. Hello. Hello. And what are you smiling at? Nothing. I presume I'm allowed to say hello to her. Well, sure. Have you got time for another one? Not really. Better make tracks. Oh, the show must go on, eh? <laughs> uh, give us another one, will you? Right, don't mind. Another one of these ones. Okay, dear. And, dearest. Yes, dear. Try not to wake me when you're up at six o'clock in the morning. And what would I be doing getting up at that ungodly hour? You'd be doing the papers. That's what you'd be doing. Oh, no. Well, who else is there? I mean, you give Mavis permission to go off on holiday and I shall be too clapped out after a night singing in the club. But Mavis told me that you had okayed it. I thought that you'd arrange something between you. I'll tell you what I will do. I'll set the alarm for you for six o'clock. That's what I'll do. Oh, flipping, Nora. You can do it, dear. Nora. Nineteen pence, please, love. Six o'clock in the flaming morning. I'm not going to damn well do it, I tell you, I'm not. It's all right, love. It's nothing you've done. No. I'm very glad to hear it. One of them out singing. The other one on flaming holiday. They aren't the only one doing any flaming work around here, I tell you. Uh, true enough, love, true enough. Well, I'm not going to damn well do it, I tell you. I'm not. Hey, oh, my love. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, well, well, hello. It is nice to see you, Neil. Oh, thank you. Well, we're off on holiday tomorrow, so... Um, You're not. To Malta, and I'm going with them. Oh, what lovely. Oh. So, uh, a sweet sherry and... Uh, a pineapple juice. And the pineapple oh. juice sort of uh, get us in the mood before we set off. Well, I'm very glad to hear it, my love. Uh, um, Len? You're being spoken to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, can I get you a drink? Only uh, if you weren't taking Mavis's place, we wouldn't be going at all. Uh, no, no, I've got one in, thanks. Now, we don't want to hang over in the morning, do we, love? Uh, <laughs> well, can I get you a drink, Elsa? Uh, no, thanks, love, thanks. Good evening. Oh, hello, Mr. Tatlock. Now, will you let me buy you a drink? I haven't made you happy. Uh, well, it is a sort of celebration. Actually. Oh, well, I, I always celebrate with rum. Oh, well, um, uh, rum uh, for... Uh, oh, Mr. Thank you. Hey, you and the old rum. Thank you. We're taking Eunice tonight, then, bingo. Oh, do I look as if I'm going to bingo? You don't like it? Could be one at prizes. <laughs> hey, you look very nice, take the notice. Thanks very much, Betty. And what's Eunice wearing? Or is that a bit of a frock you've got wrapped round your neck? <laughs> you don't give up, you, do you? No. Look, I've been thinking because I know what's going on in your minds. You think I'm not going to bring you in here because I don't want folk to see her. You think that I'm sort of ashamed of her, don't you? As if we think that. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Now, oh, you're both on tomorrow dinner, aren't you? Yeah. I'm going to bring Eunice in here tomorrow dinner and introduce her. You know, just to see if that'll stop your wisecracks, like. A formal intro, Betty, and me without a thing to wear. <laughs> right. Tomorrow dinner, then. <laughs> You know what? But if I was going on a two-week holiday to Malta, I'd cancel it. No. I would. I wouldn't let out stop me from being here when Fred brings Eunice Nuttall through that door. 